I'll just give a quick intro, um, kind of tell you how this came to be, and then I'll pass it over to Lloyd. So I, being the computer guy that I am, um, it was poking around one afternoon trying to find a better way to understand, uh, you know, and calculate segmented angles without having to put it all into Excel and manually figure it out and try to figure out what it looked like. And I came across um, Lloyd's website uh, and proceeded to purchase some software from him that has really changed the amount of time I have to spend uh, with Excel and drawing things up on my own. Um, so I thought it'd be interesting to get Lloyd uh, on to share with everybody the software that he has built. So a little bit about Lloyd and then I'll hand it over to him. Lloyd's been uh, working on his software, Wood Turner Pro. Uh, he started the organization in, in 2000, has been doing some work on his professional life with other software companies. Um, the first product he built was Wood Turner Pro. It was a software tool designed for segmented bowls. Uh, and since then, he's continued to kind of grow the, his offerings. Uh, he's got a product now that he wrote in 2005 called Lamination Pro, which is a tool for multi-generation laminations for both flat work and uh, feature rings and segmented bowls. Um, in 2017, he made a more simple version called Segment Pro uh, for the segmented turner that's more simplified. It sped up the process for designing segmented vessels and bowls. Um, and since then, he's kind of grown his offerings organically over the years. Um, and in 2010, he joined Malcolm Tibbetts and Jim Rogers and others to start Segmented Wood Turners, uh, which is one of the largest AAW clubs. He's one of the longest serving board members uh, and has both written their website, their form, and their photo gallery. So um, certainly a wealth of knowledge. He knows a lot about segmented turning and uh, appreciating him, I appreciate him being willing to kind of walk us through his product. Um, he's also offered to give any of the club members uh, that want to purchase the software uh, a discount. Um, this is less of a sales tool and more of an opportunity for us to see what's available uh, in his tool set. So um, he's going to walk us through a series of his applications, and hopefully you guys will find this useful. Uh, maybe it can save you as much time as it's saved me <laughs> trying to figure out how to produce some interesting segmented vessels. So Lloyd, I'll uh, turn it over to you and I'll let you walk us through um, your suite of tools. All right. Well, thank you very much for having me. I, I, so I look through your memberships. I, I see a couple of names in I recognize Wayne Miller, of course, is he was uh, one of the presidents of Segmented Wood Turners and a, a friend of mine for years and years, and we, we go way back. And uh, so uh, Wayne is a very fine segmenter. And uh, so I, I think I recognize a couple of other names, but anyway, I would like to thank you for having me tonight. And uh, let's see if... Um, Brad, if you could make me a host so I could share my screen, it would be great. Yep, you're a co-host now. You should okay. be able to, from the green button in the bottom, share your screen. Well, I use Zoom all the time, but it's not showing me the, uh, the share button. Oh, there it is. Okay. okay, so I will do, I'll share a bit. We're going to, we're just going to talk for a little bit first. Um, <clears throat> as Brad said, I've been doing this since 19... Oh, I forgot uh, to leave a fourth uh, there. Uh, since the year 2000. So, um, I first, I did this because I've always been a woodworker and um, would, started woodworking when on the, the day we got married, when, when my father-in-law gave me a radial arm saw and I wasn't sure what it was, but he says, if you're gonna marry my daughter, she needs some furniture. And so she, they got me, a, he gave me a, 
a radial arm saw and I started learning how to use it. So I became a woodworker and eventually built all the, the uh, furniture on the house. But I, I would tell people that I'm a woodworker and they said, oh, really, do you have a lathe? And I, I said, no, I said, I'm a woodworker. And so, but it was a common question that people asked me. And so finally I decided to just go ahead and get a lathe, but I didn't know a lot about wood turning. I knew nothing about wood turning, but I'd seen some segmented bowls. And to me that looked as much like woodworking as it did wood turning. So I decided to do that. And so I designed my first bowl using a piece of software by a good friend of mine that it was a calculator that lets you do one ring at a time. Uh, and his name was uh, um, <clears throat> um, McNeely. And uh, anyway, I built a bowl that had multiple single rings. And when I glued them together, I could see that there wasn't a lot of, of wall width in order to uh, turn it down. And so I went ahead and tried it anyway. And sure enough, I broke right through the wall and the, 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 the parts went flying. And so, you know, I was in a, in, I had a software company at the time. And I said, you know, it shouldn't be this difficult if you can do one ring at a time, why not build software that would let you do multiple rings at a time so you could see what the bowl was going to look like when it was done. And you could also see the rings in relationship to each other. And so I did that and I, I is in the process, I said, you know, if this is something I need, I can't imagine why other people wouldn't need it as well. So I did it as a product that I, that I wanted to just take to the marketplace. And so I did that and um, it started, it just grew organically. I've never ever spent a nickel on, on my company as for marketing. And so people started coming to my site and downloading the software and, you know, it was buggy as the Dickens. Although that first piece of software was written by one of my programmers and he did an incredible job of it. And uh, so uh, that was when we released Woodturner Pro and its sister program, 3D Design Pro, which lets you build uh, a wall uh, profiles that you would use in Woodturner Pro. So we did that and started growing and that was a lot of fun. Uh, and then about five years later, I wanted to do the next piece of software, which is called Lamination Pro. And that uses a process called multi-generation laminations. And so, um, but when I went to the, my friend that did the initial programming, he had gotten so busy in his career that he says, as much as I'd like to keep doing this, I, I just can't, I don't have time for hobby business. So I said, I fully understand. So I bought his half of the company and decided to teach myself how to write the code. I could read the code, I could read his code, but I'd never tried writing it before. And so, uh, but, and also he wrote that software in C++, which was a great language at the time, but it's not an easy language. And at that point I wanted something that was more modern. And uh, so I taught myself how to write in C sharp. And that's when I wrote my first pieces of software, which was Lamination Pro. And we're gonna take a look at the, uh, both of these. And that added a whole new um, element to my company because that is, is only some, it, it is used for wood turning, but it's used more for flat woodworking and we'll, we'll demonstrate that. And so the, the business continued to grow. And, um, but the, one of the issues was that Wood Turner Pro is such a powerful program it lets you do whatever you, you uh, can imagine. But because of that, it's a little bit hard to use. It's a little bit hard to learn and it's, it's slow. So I, I decided to come out with one more piece of software that was going to be easy to use uh, with a limited user interface and let the software itself do most of the work. And in order to do that, and in order to keep things simple, I, I decided to make it only uh, be used to create what I term a standard segmented bowl. And I'm going to show you what a standard segmented bowl is. And so we're going to start with that software. And um, it, it, it did exactly what I was hoping it would do is 
it is easy to use and people do, it, it lets them learn quickly and get out into their shop really quickly and start to work building the bowl. So with that, we're gonna, we're gonna start, I'm gonna go share the screen now. And we're going to start in Segment Pro. So this is Segment Pro and this is the user interface and um, now, by the way, you, I'm going to show you how you can download this software and try it for free for 30 days. All, there are four pieces of software. This one is totally self-contained. So uh, in, with WoodTurner Pro, you use a separate piece of software to design the wall profile. In Segment Pro, it has 3D Design Pro built into it. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to start in the profiles view. Now, hold on my game. So there's the profiles tab. And so here are about 150 different vessels in different categories. And so you can say that I want to see the category of hollow forms, for example, and now everything you're looking at are hollow forms. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go back to all categories. And let's just start with a simple bowl like this. So this shows you what the bowl is going to look like. And all you have to do is say open profile. And when you do, you, you give it, it has a height already. This one says it's 10 inches. And that's what this bowl looks like in 10 inches. If you wanted it to be 11 inches, just double click on that, type in 11. Uh, or you can use the up and down arrows to change the height of it. And whatever height you make it, it's going to have this shape. And this shape, as you can see, is just made up of dots. The grid here is one inch by one inch. So uh, in this case, at nine and a quarter inches tall, the top, the outside of the bowl is a, a radius of one, two, three and a half inches. And so you can do some sizing of the bowl just by putting this. But as you'll notice that as you change the height of the bowl, the, the grid changes size too as well. So, and this is a, a live uh, document. So I can grab that dot. And if I move it out here, it's going to redraw draw that bowl. So you can just by moving the dots, you can create your own. Or you can also, you can um, clear this out and just draw your own shape. So for example, if I clear this out, I can just start up here at the top and just say, I want to make just a simple uh, vase. There's the golden ratio. And when you get to the bottom, you've now made a bowl that is going to be that shape. So let's go back to profiles now and go, we'll start this one again. So if, if I wanted to build this bowl and I am a beginner, one thing you could do is I, I want it to be a feature ring bowl there are three different kinds of bowls you can do a painted segment and that's where you use different color of of segments of species to create a picture for example if we go to plans i could say let's go to this this bowl so there is a painted segment bowl just using different uh, species of wood so let's go back to profiles to that first one again and uh, so i want to do a feature ring bowl um, I could say that I am a novice. And if, so if I just click novice, it's going to make, uh, it's going to do a few things. It's going to change it to 12 segments. It's going to make the row thickness three quarters of an inch thick. And it's going to build me a feature ring that is simple. But now you can start customizing this as however you would like. So for example, this is the, in the feature ring, it puts that feature, the center of the feature ring at the widest point of the bowl. So for example, if I just made that, that point wider, it would move it up to the top. But I'm going to move it back because the, uh, I, I want this shape, but this is a lousy place to put that feature ring. It's kind of like putting uh, in photography, the, the, um, the horizon at the center of the picture would not be a good place to do it. So there is a, you can say, I want to move the feature up. So I'm just going to move it a little bit higher. And so that feels better to me. And so now you can go in and customize 
this bowl more, there are things about this bowl that you can change. So to do that, you would use the storyboard. And the storyboard is going to show you that in a feature ring bowl, there are three different um, feature groups. There's the top feature group that is that consists of a top ring and an accent row. There's a bottom group that is the bottom row, a, a fixed disc, which can either be segmented or solid and an accent row, and then the feature row. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say that I want the feature ring to be a feature ring plus two accent rows. And now we can do some other things to, um, to customize this. For example, I, in this, if this was my first bowl, I want to simplify it. So I don't need that upper accent ring. So I'm just going to uncheck it and it's gone. And I also don't need the bottom one. So, so now this is what I want to have in my feature row. And I would like for the top, this uh, top row to be, right now it's a half inch thick. I wanna make that a little bit more, let's say about um, one in, uh, three quarters of an inch. So now when I return to the bolt, but before I do that, you can see that we are using a, a palette of species and that palette has 10 species in it. Species number one is the default species, and that is maple. Species number two is the default um, disc, and that's the bottom. So this is wangi, or wanshao, whatever, however you want to put it. These are the other uh, segments that make up this species, uh, this palette. And this palette is called the saved plan because this is one that I had, I had opened. And it also has a, in, a, in species number 10, it has a um, Southwest design. So, and we'll see, I'll show you what that's gonna do. In a, and so the feature ring is, um, let's make it, I'm going to make it um, an inch and a quarter tall. So now in it is, if I make it species number nine, for example, that now it's Osage orange. So this is where you could tell it what species you want it to be. And let's go to back to yellow heart there. So uh, now when we return to the bowl, it's going to, to customize it the way that we did using the storyboard. So now you could go to the summary, and this is this tells you how you're going to build that bowl. So let's let's talk about this for a minute because this row has a, a down here it shows you a cutaway view. If you build this bowl and cut it in half, this is what it's going to look like before you do any turning at all. So even though you just drew the outside wall profile with dots the software created an inside wall profile that is based on the, the, um, the tilt of the wall at, at, any, at every location. And it also has to do with, um, let's see if I can move this. Uh, okay. Um, it has to do with the wall width, which we right now is, I've got it set at five eighths of an inch. Now, if you watch this, that if you look where two rows are pretty much vertical, where the coverage is between those is five, five eighths of an inch. If I say I want that to be more, try to get my mouse, sometimes in Zoom, you, uh, you don't get that much control of where your mouse is. So if I say that I want the wall width to be uh, three quarters inch, you can see how the wall width is getting wider. And so now when, when you return to the bowl, this is what it's going to look like. And if you go to the summary, this is how to build what you're looking at right there. So row number one is that fixed disc at the bottom. If you like, you can double click on row and it, it reverses the order so that that one is at the bottom. And so these are your different rows. Now we can do some, so the two things that you need are the board width 
and the segment edge link. Those are the two things that you need in, to build this bowl. If you already know the, the other things about it, you could build this whole this whole bowl with just two columns, the board width and the segment edge length. Because the segment edge length is, if you look at a segment, the outside edge of that segment is what is going to determine the, the diameter of, the, of that ring. So for example, a segment edge length of 1.994 with 12 segments is going to make you a ring that is going to be 7.4 inches if you just turned it enough to knock off the, uh, the edges of, of, the, um, of the ring. And because the board width is 1.78 inches, that means the inside diameter is going to be four inches. Now, I, the software calculates out to three digits, but you don't need to use it that way. You can say, I want to optimize on the segment edge length. And if you click that, it's going to change it. It's going to round it to the nearest um, tenth of, a, of an inch. Now you can also do that with the board width. So if we optimize on the board widths, that's going to round those. So that's going to make this a lot easier. Now you can always do this with the board width, but you can only do it with the segment edge length if you're at 12, um, 12 segments, maybe 16 inches, uh, 16 segments. Uh, the more segments you have, the more accurate you've got to be. So uh, you, you may want to not optimize on the segment edge length. And instead of doing 2.578, just do 2.56 or so. Uh, so the more segments you get, the more accurate you have to be with this number. So uh, this, the board length is, this is how long the board needs to be in order to get 12 segments uh, with an edge length of 2.6 inches. So this is something, it just, this is just lets you know if you're looking, if you got a board on your shelf, is it long enough to use to, to make this ring right here, ring number 12, it's gotta be 24.4 inches. Now, I don't add anything to this because I just want you to know that that's how long it needs to be to be usable. But you've got to add whatever you need to use for safety and for clamping. So um, the rest of this is all pretty explanatory. So now let's go back to our bowl view. And so this is how you would make that, that bowl. Now, the next thing you could do is make a painted segment. Let's come on, get down there. Okay, so I'm going to because I opened that other bowl, it's already got some things painted on here. Come on. What I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to return to this bowl and to make it um, for, uh, better for painting, I'm going to change it from segments from 12 to 24. And then I'm also going to tell it to use thinner rows. Okay, so now if, if I want to paint this, I'm going to go to the paint screen. And so it, it unwraps it into 20 rows and each row has got 24 segments. So now if you pick a segment, a species, let's say bloodwood, and if you tell it how many repeats per row, and this shows the options that you could have, if I were to pick three, for example, and I click anywhere, it's going to paint three segments on that row. So you could quickly design, make a diamond like that. But that's the slow way to do it. And once you're doing this, if you say undo last, it's going to undo whatever you did as the last keystroke. Or you can say reset the segments and that's going to say, change them all back to the default. Now you'll, you will remember that, row, that species number one is our default maple, 
that means that everything in in this is going to be maple. Weng, uh, Wengi is what is used for the bottom row, and that is segment number two. Come on, get over there. And so now this time I'm going to select bloodwood, but I'm going to say I want to use a diamond and I want that diamond to be 17 rows tall and we'll still do three. And so if I click somewhere, it's going to build me three diamonds. And it just so happens that if with 24 segments per row, if you use a diamond that is seven, uh, 17 rows tall, there's one and through 17, um, three fit perfectly. So now I'm going to uh, pick a different color, let's say cherry, and I'm going to change it from 17 to 13. And if I click in the center, in the same place I clicked before, I could click there, I could click there, or I could click there, it doesn't matter. The same thing, it's going to paint the same things again. And then I could also come out to somewhere else and keep painting. So now let's do one more. We'll do yellow heart. And I'm going to say, let's go nine. And this time I want to fill the diamond. And I'm going to click there and there and there. And so now if we return to the bowl, it's it's now painted that bowl the way we what the way we have wanted. So now if we go to the summary, it's going to show us that in addition to what we saw before, it also is going to tell us that we have species. We've got maple, bloodwood, cherry, yellow heart, and this is how many for each row. I'm going to double click this again to reverse the, the sorting. For row number 17, we've got six bloodwoods, and to make six segments, we have to have a board that is 5.6 inches long, nine inches, uh, a nine cherry, nine of yellow heart. So, um, so this is uh, this is what you can do, and you can print this. And if you do, it's going to print you, and you get some options with this. Now, you get some options, but you don't get as much as you would you, you may like. If you want more than that, th you can do that by instead of clicking on the print. If you export it, you can say, I want to um, export this. I'm going to give it a name of my bowl and clicks. And, um, and so now it's going to open this file in Excel. So now I can do whatever I want on in, in Excel. I, you can do calculations. Uh, what I do is the very first thing, if, if I, once I've got this bowl the way that I want it, I'm going to to make a, a report that is easier for me to read. So for example, I don't need to know the species. I don't need to know the, the, um, the number of segments. I don't need to know how thick they are. I, know, I already know the angle. I don't even need the outside diameters or inside diameters because these just are, uh, are a way to double check that I have cut the segment edge lengths correctly. But I'm just going to assume that I'm, I'm going to correct the to do them correctly. So I also don't even need this, this one. So I've, I've held my control key down and selected these. And so now I'm just sort of going to right click and say delete. And so that has given me a lot less data. Now I'm also going to click up here and I'm going to tell it to, to do me a, get a much larger font, something like uh, 24. And I'm going to then tell it that I want to print it. But when I do that, I'm going to go to page layout. And instead of telling it the width is automatic, I'm going to tell it the width I want to be one page and the height I want to be one page. And now when I go to, to um, print it, it's going to, and I can even still make it much larger than this if I would have used a larger font. What I'm trying to do is fill one page so that I can put this up on my, my bulletin board and I can see it from my table saw or my chop saw. And so it just has the amount of information that I need. 
So it's, you get a far, and then you can print it with a lot of different capabilities. So it just gives you a much more uh, functional document if instead of trying to print it from the software where I don't give you a lot of options because this is not a report writer, it's just a list. And so this will, that's just a way to get a good summary. Now, the next thing we're gonna do, so that's the bowl we're gonna make. You can go to a rings view and we're, I'm going to export this as a file. I'll just call it my bowl. And what this is going to do is create a PDF file that is going to have a, a one page for each row. And so there's row number two. This just shows you how to lay out those segments. And I, I now have, uh, so, but now by the way, if you download this software today, you're not going to see some of this information. This is some information I've just added. And, but I'm, um, there are some other things that I've added to the software that are not ready yet. And so I can't make a new um, update until I have those things working. But this just, for, for each row, it shows you this is how to lay out your segments. So this uh, is a great way, and especially the more segments you have, if this were 244 segments per row, which by the way, I've got people that do that, um, it, you know, it, they, this, it's still going to be this size, but it's gonna have 244 um, wedges that shows and they're painted. Now, Something I do is I have on my workbench, I have a, um, a little mini projector. It's one inch by one inch by one inch and you can buy them at Am Amazon for about $70. And so I put this PDF file on my iPhone and then I wirelessly, tra wirelessly transmit it to that projector and it projects it down onto my, work, uh, my workstation my, uh, my work platform, and I then put a seg easy plate or, or uh, that's typically what I do. And so this might have 48 channels on it. And I just lay that seg easy plate and we can talk about a seg easy plate in a bit, but I just put the center of it there and it just lays these colors right into the channels. So I just lay them out the way that you see it here. And since I have started doing that, I've never made a mistake. And before that I was making mistakes all the time. So it sounds really geeky, but man, boy, it sure works. So let's get out of this. So um, a little bit more than there, there is an, so that's the painted segment. The feature ring is back where we were. Um, we could also do a tornado bowl and a tornado bowl is going to, to look like this. And you for that, you also use the storyboard. And so it's just going to show you five representative rows. And you could say that I want to do, um, let's do four bands. And so if I've got 24 segments and four bands, there is one, two, three, four. Uh, so that is uh, Bloodwood, that is segment number three. So if I wanted segment number four, that's next to it to also be three and put a three there. So now I've got two, uh, two bloodwood next to each other. So this is where you can customize what is going to be in. Those bands. And so now when you return to the bowl, it's going to paint it that way. So those are the three kinds of bowls that you can do. Now, the reason that I call this standard uh, standard bowls, I'm gonna, it's easier to explain as the feature ring, is in a, a standard bowl, you've got a feature ring and uh, the feature ring is customizable in, in that you can do different things with the feature row itself. You can have one or two accent rows. They can be whatever thickness you want them to be. Um, it, above and below, and then you've got the feature group at the top and the bottom. All of the rest of the rows are field rows, and the field rows are always going to be the default um, species. Now, you can have that, um, if we take a look, 
first of all, we're going to take a look at the species. These are all of the species that are available to you. And the species is nothing more than if we get our file explorer out and we go to uh, documents. When you install the software, it creates software, a folder called My Segment Pro. And My Segment Pro has some rings in, some folders in it. One of them is called Species. So if you look at that, all these are are just JPEG files. They don't need, need to be very big. But if you just put a JPEG file in here, you could put a picture of yourself in here and it, you would be able to display that in, in a feature ring. Um, so they don't need to be big. And uh, whatever the name you give that is the name of the species that you, that you see here. So now uh, the palettes, the way that the palettes work is you have different uh, names of palettes and you can add your own palette if you want. And then there are default species that, are, that go into my default palette. Now, as you can see this, uh, I, with the work I'm doing, I'm, I'm not, I, there are things, all other things I need to clean up. You know, this, I don't have the spacing good on this. But if you click on, on anywhere on a row, it's going to show you what those files are, that this, the names of the species. And if I wanted to use my default palette, but I didn't want maple there, I can double click on this. And that brings up, um, let's, let's say I wanted to put have to make my bowl out of Bubinga, I could put Bubinga in there. And now when I go back to the bowl view, oh, let's see, I'm not, now I've got Bubinga. So, so that's how the palettes work. You just by clicking here, you can add a new um, for example, maybe you, you say my species, my palette. And now you just double click and you say, let's make the ash and then the black, and you, you know, and so on. So you just add the, the 10 species to that. And then you, that's going to give you your own species. Now, what I recommend is that um, you can, you make my default palette have the woods that you typically use. And I say that because whenever you start the software, this is the one that's going to come up first. So, and then we, if you are not going to use the palette anymore, you can just delete it. So, um, so, so now let's go on. The, let's go back to the bowl view. There are other things that you can do with this. So for example, let's go to the painted segment. And so right now, we this is a closed segment. And that's because we got closed here. If you click on open, it's going to um, put a gap between it. And that gap is going to be based on how many segments you have. Um, if you use, if you want to do segmented, open segment work, it used to be hard because you'd have to build a jig that went on your lathe. That was how most people did it. And, um, you had to use an indexing wheel and it worked okay, but just okay. It was really slow and it's difficult because gravity is working against you and it also drips glue. So you're gonna be doing your gluing right on your lathe. And um, so it would drip on the table. It just made a terrible mess. And that's one of the reasons why uh, almost nobody did open segment work 20 years ago and even 10 years ago. But uh, about then, um, there was a, one, pro, one of the top segmenters in the world, his name is Jerry Bennett, and he, is, he came out with what is called a Seg Easy plate, and that is just a white plastic uh, plate that is about 10 inches in diameter or about 13 inches in diameter, and it's going to have channels in it. You can get them in 24, and if you do have 24, then it has a gap between each of the channels of four degrees. And if you were to, to go down to, let's say, eight, uh, 16, for example, the gap is six degrees. And at 12, oops, let's see, at 12, it's eight degrees. Now, you can make it anything you want. If you want the gaps to be, um, if, if you wanted the gap to be, uh, six, you can do that. And so now you've got a, a, a six degree gap 
but you could no longer use a seg easy uh, plate. So, uh, and if you wanted it to be, for example, 18, you just double click on that and type in 18 segments. And um, so there is an 18 segment plate also and the gap is four degrees. So we also talked about the wall width and the base, and we didn't talk about the base thickness. You can make, if you wanted that to be uh, three quarters of an inch, now, it's, now you can see that the base is three quarters of an inch. Then the, um, you also, instead of, if you were to go have a closed segment, you could say that I want a spacer. Let's go for this, let's go to the feature ring. If, if you wanted to put in a spacer of, let's say, um, three sixteenths, it puts in this space, uh, it puts in a spacer and you can either have that spacer on the default rings, which are these and these, or you could say, I want it on the feature ring, and now you've got it there. And, or you could say, I want it on all rings, and it, and it would do that for you too. So it's very typical to see a feature ring that is, has spacers that are the same as the accent rings above and below it. And now that you've done that, you can say, well, this bowl is 10 inches tall, but I really don't know how big that is. Uh, one thing I do know is that it has a volume of 388 cubic inches, and that will become important in a bit. Uh, but you could say that I want to see what this bowl would look like if it was on a dining table. And so this is just a typical size dining table. So you can see that's a big bowl. You can say, well, it's too big. Let's, let's make it, let's see what it looks like if that bowl was seven inches tall. And so now that is a, a more pleasing size for this kind of a bowl. What would it look like on a, a fireplace mantle? Uh, what would it look like um, in a display case? And so anything you do is still going to, be, this is still a live document. What would it look like if it was on a jet lathe? And so um, I had somebody ask me once, well, well, can you turn it while it's on the lathe? And, and actually you can, if you click this button over here, uh, there is a problem though, is you, you have to get out of the way when the, the, the legs come around. So anyway, and you can also say, what does it look like if it was on this, if it was the Starship Enterprise? So you, you never know when that's gonna be helpful. So uh, let's just take it back to none. And then the other thing that you can do then is you can go into Lamination Pro and you can make a feature ring that is going to fit this. And so um, before, we, before we leave this, I'm wanting, I'd like to know if anybody has any questions about Segment Pro. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, the Measurements you have are in tenths of an inch. Is it possible to put it in fractions? No, and I'll, and I'll show you why. Um, first of all, along the, the same lines, does it speak metric? The, you know, we're moving towards metrics. You know, we, they tried once before, they didn't make a good try, but we're going, to, we're going to be on metrics one of these days. I'm surprised they haven't done it so far. The issue is that all of these are, um, these fields are numeric fields. T uh, fractions are not numeric, fractions are characters. Now, it's not as though you can't convert characters to fractions. But the, the, the uh, controls that are available to me for programming, I can use numeric or I can use uh, fractional. Now, be, because these are numeric, you can click an up or down, and that's going to change these by whatever um, amount I've specified as the, the index amount. But you can't do that if they're text. Now, the other thing that is changing in the computer world is that desktop computers are going away in favor of laptops and tablets. And so those all have touch screens and touch screens 
are available. So I sh I'm not sure if I'll be able to demonstrate this, but I'm going to, no, it, it doesn't. So if this was a laptop, you can do everything without a keyboard. And so uh, what you're seeing now is if you wanted to use, let's say a surface pad and use it full screen, there's no keyboard. And so you have to bring up a virtual keyboard and to, to type in a text fraction amount is difficult. Uh, but it's just so much easier if you can just use your finger to touch the up and down arrows. Um, and so anyway, that's, that is the reason. And the other thing is fractions are just going away. So um, it, the, what I recommend is, is you can get, for example, um, micrometers that are, that are in decimal inches and also you can get tape measures that have got fract a decimal on one edge and fractions on the other edge. And so it's so easy to, to, to get those tools that are going to let you do easy conversions without having to use a calculator or anything. So uh, from now on, I will only be using uh, decimal. Thanks, Lloyd. Yep. Is it available for Mac or just PC? It, it actually runs great on Mac, but you have to do one of two things. Um, in a Macintosh, um, you know, a Macintosh is a PC. All of the, the it, it uses the same, well, it uses a chip that's similar to an Intel chip, but all of the chips that are used in a Macintosh are, you can substitute with a PC chips. So that means that it's fully capable of running PC software. But you, one of the two things that you can do is you can put in a, a program called Parallels or something like Parallels, and that is a, 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 an emulator of an operating system. So if you install Parallels, it allows you to open up a Parallels window that is running Windows in it, and you can install Windows software. It creates a virtual partition on your disk drive. You tell it how big you want that partition to be, and now you get to run Windows and PC software at the same time. It worked well, okay, but it was a bit unwieldy when I did it, so I ended up buying a PC to run this software. I see. Yeah, um, Parallels has been around for 15, 15 years. It's really good, but it's you know you're still using it in a Macintosh interface. However, it's going to look like you are using a PC. Now I've got true, I, you know, 50, easily 15% of my customers use either Parallels or Bootcamp, which is option number two. Bootcamp is, um, is a program by Apple. It's a utility that lets you create a physical disk partition on that disk. And once you do that, then when you boot your Macintosh, you, you, uh, you can then install Windows on that physical partition. So now you've got two computers. You've got a Macintosh and you've got a PC. When you boot, you just choose whether you want to go to Macintosh or Windows. And the nice thing about a Macintosh is it boots so quickly, you, you can easily um, switch from Windows to PC. Now, one of the good things about that is if you are, have any concern about viruses, viruses are much more prevalent in Windows than Macintosh. Um, if you'd use Boot Camp, there is no even dotted line between the, a physical and a virtual, uh, a, two physical disk partitions. So you completely isolate app, uh, Windows from the Mac operating system. And so that's a, that's a good way to go. And then the other thing that I recommend is, the is, is getting your own, uh, getting a PC. And that can be done by going to eBay. You can go to Craigslist. Uh, you can, the, the important thing, if you want to get um, a desktop, I, I'm sorry, a laptop, is older laptops had, did not have much resolution. Uh, this resolution that I'm currently looking at here is called 19 is uh, 1080p, and that means that vertically there are 
10 or 1080 pixels vertically and also 1920 pixels wide. Uh, if you get uh, one that is 1080p, that automatically sets it perfectly for my software. If you use an older P, uh, laptop, it's going to have 786 vertical pixels, and you're not going to see all of this window down here, but you're going to get a, um, a scroll bar out here to the right, and you can still get to it. So I've put the, the controls that are most uh, seldom used at the bottom to, to make the scrolling less necessary. But it, if you go to the bold view, you're just not going to get as much access to the screen as you do if you get a 1080p. Any desktop is going to give you that to you, but not every laptop. OK, thanks. Any other questions? Yes, is there a uh, program that would allow you to put in staved sections uh, you so that you have a combination of a vertical angle and a horizontal angle? Yep, uh, we're gonna we are going to get to that because uh, this is this is uh, so what you've been looking at so far is Segment Pro, and it is the software that I came out with about three years ago, and and so again every. Everything that you can do in here is to make a standard bowl. But if you want to do something that is non-standard, that's when you would use um, Woodturner Pro. And we're going to we're going to look at that. But we're going to before we do that, we're going to do a little bit more here. But we're going to use Lamination Pro because it, so I'm going to I'm going to click on Reset All. And let's do something that is going to demonstrate a little bit more of the capabilities. I'm going to bring up a, a website here, and I'm going to tell it to search for Hopi Bowl. Bowl. No, both. So I've been, done a Google search, and I'm going to look for a, a profile that I like. Um, but you need to, it needs to be something where you can kind of look from it from the side. So let's just see something. Oh, OK, let's do this one. OK, so I'm going to take this bowl. I'm going to click on it. And then I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to say uh, save image as. And then I'm going to put this on my desktop. And I'm going to call it a Hopi Bowl. OK, so now I've got um, a file saved. So I'm going to go back to Segment Pro. And I'm going to say plus minus image. And then I'm going to say um, open. And I'm going to go to my desktop. And let's see. There's that bowl. And so now I need to crop it. So I'm going to click on crop because I want the center to be, at, this is going to be the uh, center of the bowl. And I'm going to put the top at the top. I'm going to put the bottom not at the bottom, but where I want the bottom of the bowl to cross. So let's put it about there. And so I'm going to say that's OK. So I'm going to say crop and save. And so that's going to put that in there. So now I'm going to make my first dot. You can see that it's anchored to that point and to that point. But so my first point is going to be up here. And then I'm just going to put dots on the page. And I don't like the shape of that. And so I'm going to go like that. And once you do that, it's going to draw. As soon as you get to the bottom, it thinks it says, OK, you must be done. And so now we've created that profile. And this is what it's going to look like with that. So um, now I don't need that picture anymore. So I can click on plus minus image, and it takes that image away. So that's a way that you can get to a, a um, you can get from any picture, you can use that to trace it. 
Now, so what we're going to do now is that we're going to go to feature ring. I'm going to use a different palette, something like this. I'm going to customize. Do I'm going to customize this a bit by saying, let's do it in 16 segments. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the storyboard, and I'm going to tell it that for the feature ring, I want it to be half of the default. Now, so. Uh, you can see this one has got, um, let's see, let me make sure I've got that correct. Okay, is the storyboard. So right now it's got 16 of the, of the accent rows and 16 of the featuring that's because I've told it to be same as the default. If I change that to be half of the default, that is going to give me bigger, uh, bigger ones. I'm also going to say I, I only need the feature plus two, and I, I don't want to have the top or bottom accent rows, and I want it to be the feature row. Let's make it a little bit taller. And so now I'm going to return to the bowl, but I'm also going to tell it that I want it to do it in 24 segments. Okay, so so now I also I I think this bowl in my mind it's way too wide. So I could move these things, but also I could say the diameter I want it to be less. And as I start clicking that, you're going to see that it's going to move this closer to the edge, to the center. So so now in my mind that is a little bit better. I've got the row, I've got the feature ring a little bit higher than I think I want it. So something like that. Uh, now I can see that the thickness of this is one and a half inches and the edge length is 2.7. I'm going to, just for, to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to do it more until it is basically three inches. Okay, so, so now the, the place that I need to fill on this is one and a half inches tall and three inches wide. So now I'm going to go into Lamination Pro and we're going to start in the Laminate Wizard. This is where you always start with Laminate Wizard. You tell it how many strips you want to use. Now remember, this is for multi-generation laminations. So I, you tell it how many strips you want. Right now I've got five, there's six strips, seven strips, and so, so there's seven strips. These are the species and these are the widths of each of those strips. So this is, with this, this is what that board is going to look like. Um, I'm going to make a couple of changes here. I'm going to make, uh, the first thing we're going to do is make just a chevron pattern. So I'm going to change, I'm going to keep it symmetric. And so now whatever we do to, to strip number one is going to happen in number seven. I want for the cherry to be an eighth of an inch. And I want, um, the holly to be something a little bit more like you know, 916. Okay, actually that's a little bit too much. Let's go five eighths. Okay, so now if I say continue, this is what the board looks like. And this is how we're gonna cut this board all the way across. And we've told it the first cut width is one half of an inch. So if you go perpendicular to a saw curve, these are just four representative saw curves, that's a half an inch. So also we're gonna cut it at 30 degrees. If I click on this side of it, it's gonna be 35, 40, 35, 40, or you can click on this to make it 31 or whatever. And so, so um, if I were to make this, let's just say one inch. So now we've got bigger. So now if you cut all of these strips, and then reassemble it into a first generation board. So you're going to click on what, what we're looking at now is a laminated board. And so if we go to first gen, the first two strips is what our chevron is going to look like if we use 30 degrees and we flipped. You can see that we told it to flip every other one. If I wouldn't have flipped them, it would have looked like this. If I would have flopped them, now you're not going to see a difference because it's a symmetric, a symmetric board. If this were, if this were um, bloodwood, 
the, if the top row was bloodwood, it would be bloodwood, 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 and so on. So let's just take it back to our flip. And so once you do that in Lamination Pro, it's showing you that this is where you would cut it if you wanted to go to make a second generation board. And it also, it's so right now we, we did the first cut at 30 degrees. If we wanted to make a second generation board, this is where we would cut it. And there's 30 degrees if we come out here, there's 35. And so let's just leave it at 40 degrees. So now if you do a second generation board, that's what that is gonna look like. This is where you would cut it to make a third generation board. And also this is what it would look like if uh, what we did is we cut through, you can, if we come back here to the, the laminated board, the generation, the, you can see that everything is a chevron. The, the left strip is a declining pattern. The right strip is incline, decline and incline. So if you cut through the declining pattern, then when you go to the second generation, this is what it's going to look like. But if instead you went to the inclining, cut through the inclining pattern, you're going to get a complete different look. So now as you make a third generation, you could say, well, what would it have looked like if I would have used 35 degrees for the first generation, 30, 30 degrees for the second generation, what would it have looked like if instead of, of um, cutting it through the decline, the incline. So you just have, you can just experiment around with this until you find what you're after. And then the next thing you can do is you could say, what I want to do is cut this into, make a disc out of this to make the base for a turning. So this is how you would cut it if you wanted to use eight segments to make that disc. So this shows you where you would cut it. And you can see that, that right now the red lines indicate a repeating unit. A repeating unit is 5.4 inches. So right there is 5.4 inches. So if you were to cut that at 45 degree, at 22 and a half degrees, because you've got eight repeating units, you then could assemble those into a disc that would look like, um, hold on here one second, I've got to change my first cut to make them smaller. So this is what that would look like if you, if you use just the top segments. And by that, I mean, you'll see that the top segments, this is a top segment, this is a bottom segment. The, the top is different from the bottom. So if you make a disc, you're going to get either using the tops, it's going to look like this. If you use the bottoms, it's going to look like this. And if you use both tops and bottoms, it's going to look like this. Now, usually that doesn't look too good, but there are times when, when it really looks great. So anyway, and it also shows you um, how much wood you're going to need in order to make that. Uh, and unfortunately, it's not showing down here because of Zoom. But also it shows you, for example, I told it to show me the outside dimension. So right now with everything that we've done so far, the outside is 10. Uh, this is just, a, I'm, I've told it to display a 10 inch and a zero inside. So you could keep going out with this until you'll see, you, you start running out, you start getting voids. You could still make it at 10 inches. And you also could make the inside two inches. And so this is something you could, you could make. So uh, no matter it, and then whenever, whatever you've designed, you can say file print preview, and it's going to show you, this is what the disc is going to look. I've got a little issue right here where I'm not drawing the, well, zoom is, is what's, what's doing this, I believe. Anyway, it shows you how to find 100%. Oh, this is not going to show me. This, again, this is Zoom doing that. But anyway, it tells you how the steps that you need to do to actually build this. 
So a single page is all you need to do to take out to the shop to build this. And it's going to have everything that you, that you see here um, in text. So anyway, that's what Segment Pro is. But now let's go back and we're going to go to the Laminate Wizard. And let's, um, oh, actually, let's just go to um, Generation 1. And remember now the, the image, the space we needed to fill is three inches wide and an inch and a half tall. So I'm going to tell it that the export region, which is the rec red rectangle, is one and a half inches tall. So, so we have, this is all that we've got to work with height wise, but it needs to be three inches tall. And to do that, that means because the two strips need to equal three inches, that means that we want to use half of whatever the, the, the amount is that segment pro said. And so now we have a repeating unit of three inches and there's one inch tall. So as you can see, we don't have enough wood. We, it's too big to do what we want. So first of all, we can say, we go back to the laminate wizard and we could make the um, holly be something a lot narrower. Three eighths of an inch. You, we would probably also make these things a little bit narrower. Oops. And now let's go continue. And if we were to change the angle, we could do something like that. So now we have, we have this fits, we're wasting a little bit of wood. So we could go back to the laminate wizard and take, change that, that one inch top and bottom to something more like five eighths. And a little, not quite enough. So we'll just leave it anyway. So now what we're going to do is we're going to export this image. Come on. And we're going to, to take it into uh, documents, my segment pro, species, and call it Chevron one. So now if we go back to Segment Pro, we can go into our palettes and you can see we're using the economy. So I'm gonna to go to palettes and I'm gonna go to economy and double click on this and go to Chevron one. And there's the one we made. So now when you go to bold view, oh, except we need to also go to the storyboard because the feature ring is going to be number 10. So now we return to bold. And so that's how you, you um, can display whatever you do in Lamination Pro in Segment Pro. Now back in Lamination Pro, we, we also, instead of doing a chevron, we could do something that is going to make it uh, more attractive. I want to go back to Laminate Wizard and I'm going to, instead of three eighths for the, the center strip, I'm going to make it bigger. I'm going to make it about seven eighths of an inch. And so now what I'm going to do is I want, I'm going to go into the Southwest design. Now take a look at this, this board because you're going to see it in the next screen. Now for anything that's going to be done, a diamond or Southwest design, is going to be done with a first generation board. So we're going to go Southwest. And um, so there is that board we were looking at. And this is how we're going to cut that board to make this design. So, so now you'll notice that there is a blue area here. And that is the center strip is blue. That is the part that we're going to remove from this board. Now, also, if we just wanted to make a um, a diamond, we've got, so we've got the blue strip, then we've got three strips, so three strips, three, there's one, two, and three, but we want to change that to zero strips. And so now, um, 
we've got a diamond and it is pretty, it's, the problem is the diamond's too big because when you make a design in Lamination Pro for a segment, for a feature ring, you wanna be able to see what it looks like on the inside of the bowl and it looks it needs to look as good from the inside as it does the outside but if you were to make this and then cut the angles on it for to make a ring you're going to be cutting off the ring so watch what happens when i increase the size of the blue strip it's going to start making it bit smaller and you can make it however small you want now you can see we, we need to add more wood to it but that's easy just laminate wizard to add more, but you also then can change the angle, which is going to, um, it's going to also change the size. So you get to, to make whatever size you want. And then it says, in order to make this bowl, these are the cutting instructions. To remove the center strip shown in blue, the width of your board is now 3.63 inches that if you would put a straight edge across there, straight edge across there, the difference is 3.63 inches. So you set your table saw fence at 1.38 inches from the blade, and then you cut the board twice with the this jagged edges against the fence, and the tooth that's closest to it is going to cut right there, and then you flip it around and you and you that will be your second cut. So that perfectly removes this from the center part. Then you just move the top over the bottom, and that that's what gives you that that um, that diamond. But you can do the same thing now. If so, the first the easiest thing to do is a chevron. The next easiest thing to do is a diamond. The next easiest thing, but it isn't much harder, is to do a southwest design. And to do that, you're just going to tell it how many strips you want. Let's go back to three. And um, you pick the angle. Let's go 35. And that's about what I want it to look like. Uh, but we need to fill in that blank. So I'm going to go back to the laminate wizard and tell it that instead of 5 eighths, let's go to, um, let's just see if 1 inch does it. And so now you go back southwest. Nope. Come on. So now I probably would even, and, and so these strips are a little thin. So let's make them a little bit wider. So something like that would look pretty good. And now by changing the, the you'll notice that as I change that center strip, the, the segment gets wider. So you could probably go, I think that's going to be too wide. I could go there though, and that would work just fine. So now you export that and you go back and put it into um, number 10. And that's going to show you, that's going to show you, it's going to be right there. So anyway, that's what Lamination Pro is. And a little bit more before we leave Lamination Pro. Let's see, what time is it? Um, how, how much time do we have, Brad? I think you're good to go for a little bit longer. Yeah. OK, because I because we're now going to go into WoodTurner Pro. Um, but it, I just wanted to show you more about uh, Lamination Pro is I'm going to do just open a sample file. Um, let's do a bird design. So this is a design that I've done probably six or seven times. And every time, you know, I've built my headboard that's got this on it, a hall table. I have put it into segmented boards. I, I, I work with a high school um, about uh, 25 miles from where I live. And um, so I've donated my software. I go down and show them how to use the software and to do things. And, and so uh, this, this will be my third year. The first year I showed them this and they, you know, these, these high school kids, they just got into this so much. And they've said, do you think we could make a, this into a skateboard? And I said, I don't know why not. So we, had, we came up with a design that had birds facing like this. And 
it it had we made it into a board and that we made it thick about an inch thick so that we could resaw it into about um, three a, a, about three sixteenths of an inch is what we wanted because if you if you cut this with all of these slices and everything if you cut it too thick it's going to delaminate but and so if you cut it thin like that you make a, your board out of a, a a strong substrate and then you epoxy the wood the strip to it and uh, it's never going to come apart and so they did that and it was so popular the the teacher said that the the uh, registration for his class just went right through the, he, he had to put limits on because too many people wanted to take the class. So what we're doing this next year, uh, we would have done it this last year, except for COVID, but uh, we're gonna be doing guitars where uh, we're gonna buy a, a kit for a, a Telecaster guitar. And then we're going to make a Lamination Pro uh, star design and then, uh, the kit comes with a body. We're going to plane off a quarter inch from the back, quarter inch from the front, and then apply just an overlay to it. So anyway, those are the kinds of things that you can do. You see, once you've got this bird too, you can see the first there, this is how I started. And then this was the first generation that I made at 15 degrees. This is how I cut it for the second generation at 25 degrees. This is what I did for how I cut it for the third generation. And that's, uh, that's what you come up with. So once you start with a board, you can make over two, uh, about two and a quarter million different designs just by changing the things that you see right here. And if you don't like the shape of this bird, just by uh, say you changing, just clicking on different angles, you can make different shapes of, of birds. So you know, this is more of a, south, a, a Southwest style bird. So anyway, that is Lamination Pro. So now let's go into Woodturner Pro. This is, uh, so any Before you do that, can I ask a question, please? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so once you have uh, these laminate stri laminated strips, how do you turn those into segments that you can assemble into rings? Okay. So. Um, if I were to go first gen, let's make this bigger. Um, and so let's just say that this is the board and that's this is what's going to be going onto the, um, onto the feature ring. Instead of gluing this into a board, if the last, if this is the last thing I'm gonna do before that, I glue them together in pairs. So I, I glue them together in a repeating unit. This repeating unit is three inches wide and it is one in five inches tall. So we would want that to be shorter, of course. And let's just put in two inches. So anyway, that's, that is what we're going to end up with. So what I would do is I would um, glue these together in strips and then I would take each of those strips and put it on either a table saw, but I use a miter saw, and I would cut it off at, you know, at this point and at this point. So all I have to work with now is that piece. So then I stand that up on its edge and I use my miter saw, but you could also use just a sled on your, on your table saw, clamp it down, and then you're gonna cut the angles onto it for the number of segments you want. So it's, it's pretty easy is you just have to cut it, cut the top and the bottom. Now, remember, uh, Lamination Pro is a two-dimensional. It just shows you what the top of the board looks like. So you would make this in however thick it needs to be. Uh, typically, that's going to be from three quarters of an inch up to maybe an inch and a quarter, depending on the diameter of the bowl, because you're going to have curvature on every seg segment. So then you, you just cut off the top and the bottom at that point, and then you stand it up and then you, you cut the angle on one side then flip it over and cut that same angle on the other side. And then you do eight of those or 12 of those or however many you want to make the ring. So once you've done it once, it's, it's terribly simple. Any other questions? 
Yes, Lloyd, Rick, Rick Angus, I have a question. Okay. And this is just kind of general. When you make a bowl, just a, a very simple one with the brickwork pattern, the a very vertical section will have a brick that is the height of the the segment that you've cut. All of it said all of the layers are three quarters of an inch, just for a okay. argument's sake. Okay. And if you have a vertical section, it's going to look less tall than one that's tilted because of the the tilt angle of the the face of the segment. So look down at the bottom and right now we're seeing it all square, but once you've, you've cut over that and made the curve, mm -hmm. the, the segments that are near the bottom where you have much more of a, uh, of a tilt angle, when you yes. look at it from a distance, they look taller. And one of the things that you can do is compensate the thickness of each ring so that from a distance, the bricks look all the same height. Okay, uh, you could do that. You could not do it in Segment Pro, but you could do it in, in Woodturner uh, Pro. Woodturner Pro. Because in yes. Woodturner Pro, you're in charge. Yes, um, good. In Segment Pro, the software is rules-based. And I've, you know, so it, you can see that uh, some of these are thinner than when you get to the bottom, it transitions. Now, by the way, the way that you do that is, I'm going to move a couple of these dots here. The this second one from the bottom is where the transition starts. So, so for example, by putting it there, that tells it where to start the transition into the base. So if you don't need that much wood, that much of a transition, grab this dot and move it lower. And that's going to, to um, if I were to redraw this bowl, it would, it would, uh, it would better handle that. Uh, but anyway, that is the dot that tells it where to start transitioning to what to be wider. Oh yes, I understand that. But okay, but so yeah, what you what you described is um, you you see an optical illusion based on that, and if that's what you want to do to to counter it, then just you could do that. Uh, exactly as you described in Woodturner Pro. I, I probably am going to tell you, I think that's, that's more effort than I've ever seen anybody go to. Um, but it, you know, the nice thing is you're in charge. Correct. If, that, if that is something that catches your attention and you think it may also catch the attention of others, then you could fix it by just changing, making the heights different. It's, pro saw, it's probably more effort than... I would go to because um, because you I've never I don't see that done. Um, well, I saw a bowl by Kurt Theobald, mm -hmm. and it looked stunningly better. Yeah. Than the the typical ones. I and you know I I could see Kurt doing that. Um, and that's what he did. Yeah, and 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 I also could imagine what that looks like. I just have never seen it done. So, I'm, but I'm not at all saying it's not a good idea. And the nice thing is, is that I'm here to tell you is that I don't think anything is a good idea or a bad idea. It's up to you. This is something Absolutely. where you're you're in charge. You do what makes you happy. That's great. Beth, Any other questions on, on this? And then we'll go into Woodturner Pro. We have tried to do that. And it, you definitely do. You get the concept and the design and segmented Pro. And then you go over to Woodturner Pro, which doesn't have, in my hands, the paint abilities, but does let, let you get more of the how to design the shape and change the narrowness of each row to get them more similar. Yeah. The reason that Segment Pro is the software to use for painting is if, if we go into these plans and get one of these. So, so this, this uh, bowl is 48 segments. And so Tom Lohman is the one that does these designs. And by the way, he sells his plans. So you get 30 of his designs for $15. You buy those from him. And then you, you get it in a single file and you go 
share import. And then you browse to where that single zip file is and click on open and it puts those 30 designs in into your uh, segment pro. But I wrote the paint on this for Tom Lohman. I needed it to work with whatever his abilities were, because if, if it met his needs, it would meet anybody's needs in the world. And so that's why today it's up to 244. Um, for, and just to show you what that looks like, if you say 244 and hit enter, um, now it's gonna take a little bit. So that's how that's, so now you've got 8,540 uh, segments at, and, and he makes them uh, even thinner than this. So, I mean, it, it's, it's nothing. I mean, some of these people are doing 25,000 segments per bowl. Okay, the other thing is, Rick, that it doesn't necessarily look bad if it changes the width at the bottom. It actually makes good design features. Okay, so, so now let's go into um, WoodTurner Pro. WoodTurner Pro, this is the, um, the window that we're gonna be looking at. And we're going to actually start in 3D Design Pro. Now, if we, in 3D Design Pro has got about 150 um, built into it too. There, the issue is if you go file open and then browse to um, WoodTurner Pro, uh, let's see, documents, my 3D design pro and samples. If you were to go to hollow forms, it shows you the name of the file, but it doesn't show you what it looks like because these are not image, these are data files. Uh, but the software also installs a visual index. And something we may not have. So we just open them all till we find the one. So if you open the, so for example, this just shows you hollow forms and I like, uh, so I like this 518. So I'm going to open up 518. And so now that is, that is what, it, now the difference is in WoodTurner Pro and 3D Design Pro, you get to draw both the outside and the inside wall profile. Now that is something that you have to do, but it's also something that you get to do because if you think as you're doing this, because once you've made, once you've drawn these dots in, you then get to to and you do that just with the pencil. You know, I typically stop start at the bottom, I click there, and then I just start making clicks around. If you wanted to make it look you know, to put that, just put in a couple of other, of other clicks in it. Um, like, you know, that gives you a sharp edge. And then you can get the move tool and grab a dot and move it and, and it's going to change it and go control Z and that's going to bring it back. You also can draw a marquee around a number of dots and move those all at the same time if you wanted to make a smaller size. So anyway, that's, that's what 3D Design Pro is. This is now a free program and it's useful for, for lots of things. It just is, you have to use it if you want to create a, a wall profile for WoodTurner Pro. So now with both WoodTurner Pro and 3D Design Pro running, I have access to this button that says transfer to WoodTurner Pro, if you transfer to WoodTurner Pro program. So I'm gonna click on that. And now WoodTurner Pro starts flashing that says, either how tall do you want it to be or how wide, I'm gonna make this seven inches tall. So now this is how, this is what it's gonna look like. So we're gonna, we're gonna start with a, a fixed disc at the bottom and then I'm just gonna start adding rows. I'm gonna add one row and instead of three quarters, I'm gonna make it 0.5 inches tall. So now I'm just gonna start saying new row and just till I get to the top. And then I'm going to come over here and click on profile snap. And that's going to snap to 
yep. all of the edges to fit that wall profile. So, so now this is where your view, your views are, the yellow background. You've got, there's the vessel view. And as you can see, this is a simulated 3D. If you were to look at it, if you, um, if you were to look at one in 3D, and if you were to compress it, this is where you would see those lines. So, in, so then this is the cutaway view. This is what a ring view is. So if we take a look at this row, this row is selected because there's a blue line around it. If you want to select this one, you just double click on it. That gives you a blue line on it. If you then say, show me the ring view, that shows you what this row is going to look like. And then this is a single segment of that row, gives you some additional information. And then this is the cutting summary, similar to the summary in, wood, in Segment Pro. So this is everything you need. Um, and now you can paint just by, so for example, by clicking on, and here's the, this, these are the things that you're in charge of. You can say on this row, I want to, Right now, everything is 12 in, uh, segments because the first row had 12 segments. And then when you add new rows, it just adds whatever you used last time. Also, that's what it did on the, um, the height. It, um, you can specify yourself what the diameters are, the outside and the inside. And you also can say, I want a vertical spacer of 0.125. Uh, and it puts vertical spacers on that row only. So as you can see, everything happens only on the selected row. However, if you, um, oops. If, you, if you double click on one row and then shift click on another row, it selects all of those rows. And then you can change them all to uh, 0.125. So for example, so now you can see we changed those rows, but nothing else. So let's put those back to 0.5. If, if we wanted to do a feature ring bowl in this one, what I might do is I might take this row and this row. I held my, my control key down and that let me select just that row and this row. So now I'm gonna change the thickness of those to 0.125. And then this row, I'm gonna click and now instead of typing in the height, I'm going to hold my control key and type my, type my up arrow until I get it to where I want it to be. And so then I could put in vertical spacers on this row just by saying I want 0.125. You also over here, you can tell it how tall you want or what species you want that to be. So um, it's, and if you wanted to do some painted segments on this, I can say, I'm going to take this row, this segment. I'm going to hold my shift key down and get this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And now I want to paint those, but instead of telling it using the species over here, I'm just going to right click and that brings up all of my species. And I can say, let's make the, those out of Bubinga. And now also I did that. One thing I did a little bit wrong there is I should have pointed this out. It says that the paint repeats per row are four. So that put four rows, uh, four diamonds on what, what I did. If I would have changed that to three, it would have just given me three diamonds on it. So you can still do what you did in Segment Pro, but you can't unwrap it as you can in Segment Pro. And it's just not as powerful for, for painting. So it's, it's really good for everything else, but if you're going to do a painted segment, then because that's a same painted segment is really always a standard bowl. It just makes more sense to use a segment pro for doing that. And so now you could go in and change the, uh, change the species for this one and this one. And so, uh, so you're in charge. So now, now let's do, um, let's do a stave bowl. So, if I let's see if I've got that to okay. So for example, if we wanted to do this and we wanted to make staves out of that, I'm going to open 909 and that is in urns. So 
let's go back to 3D and go file open. I'm going to go to samples burns 909. Okay, so that's the bowl I want to use. I'm going to go back to Wood Turner Pro, say file new. And so 3D Design Pro, I'm going to transfer. And let's make it 14 inches tall. So now I'm going to um, just put in some rows down at the bottom to get up to about there. And now I'm going to do one more row here. But this one, I'm going to change it from a flat to a stave. And so now I can type in these things, but it is easier to use your keyboard shortcuts. There are keyboard shortcuts over here that shows you everything you can do when you've got stave selected. So I'm going to use my left button to come out to bring it out. Then I'm going to use the control left to bring this out. I'm going to go control to, to make it a lot taller. And then this needs to be, let's say, an inch and a quarter. And then you tell it how many of those segments you want. Now, when you when you go to take a look at this, this is this is what it would look like. And um, so there's the cutaway version. So now I'm going to add a new row. But actually, what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to double click this row here. I'm going to right click and say copy. And then I'm going to click here, click there, right click and say paste above. And so now I'm going to just add some more rows up here. And then I'm going to go profile snap. And so, so now you have a segmented top, a segmented bottom, a solid disk, and the staves here. So, so um, and if we take a look at this row to, to do this, you've got to have a miter angle of 6.34 and a blade tilt of 13.62. And this gives us a slope of 24. 0.49 degrees. Now, the reason that that's important is if you were going to do the tradition, traditional stave making, you would now make yourself a jig to allow you to do that, that board right there. Um, but it's a single use thing. Now, I, instead of using the stave, there is another one called compound. And that is, that actually is, so a stave, as, as you know, with a stave barrel, those are made by taking long strips of wood and you rip them into staves. But if you, a compound is where you're going to do more like a, a standard segmented thing. And after every cut, you're going to flip the board over and then make your next cut. So that is actually cross cutting a board and cutting the, the, the angle into it. So what I like to do, and I'm going to, to demonstrate that here, is I'm going to change it. I'm going to change this from a stave to a compound. OK, so now it's not a good size. But the, 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 the important thing is we're going to solve for a slope. And I'm going to put this at. Uh, uh, 65, I think. OK, I think this is going to work. OK, so now as I make this taller, actually, sixty-five degrees. So, so from my table, sixty-five degrees is that slope right there. But I need to tell it how big the outside. So you solve for different things. In this case, what I'm going to be solving for is I'm going to tell it what the outside diameter is. And let's just start with 9. Oh, I got pretty close. Let's change that to 10. OK, so I've got a board that is 10 inches tall, but it locked it in at 65 degrees. Now I need it to be wider than this. Let's put in 
1.25. And um, so now I'm going to, to I'm going to use my left mouse to move the bottom out. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now I'm going to hold my control key and go one, two, three, four, five, six, where I, I moved the, the top out. So now I have actually created the identical thing, but I have forced it to be a 65 degree angle. So now what I'm going to do, and the, the, typically I do this with shorter rings, but let's just say that I was going to make this ring. Um, and I am going to make myself a wedge. Well, and I actually, it's, it will make more sense if I if I'm going to cut this down to let's say five inches. Okay. Anyway, the the thing is, in order to do this uh, without a making a sled, I'm going to make a wedge. And that wedge is going to be a three-sided wedge, and it's going to be about 18 inches long. And the angle is going to be there. There's going to be the wood that goes along here, and the, it's going to be out here, and then it's going to go up. And and it could be bigger than that, but it's going to have this as the angle, and so then it's going to have just a straight edge and a 90 degree back here. So I'm going to cut that wedge and it's going to be 18 inches long and I'm going to double side tape that to my miter saw of the fence on the miter saw. And then I'm going to take my board that I'm going to and that board is going to be an inch and a quarter thick and it's going to be out here and down there. And we're going to talk about this in a second. But if you were to take that board and lay it on that wedge, you then can you you then pick the number of segments that you want. And if it were eight, for example, you're going to to put your fence at 22 and a half degrees and you're going to cut that board once and then you're going to flip it over on that wedge and you're going to make your next cut and you've actually made a perfect segment that you can take eight of those and you can make the ring and it's going to be perfect. So this, you can do this method in a quarter of the time it would take you to do the other if you even, and then you have to make a, a, a sled for each one that you want to do. But, but you can use that wedge every time you want to use 65 degrees. Now, the, in addition to do, getting 65 degrees, if you, if you were to double side tape it using this edge, now you've got 90 minus 65, so you've, you're now going to be making 25 degree um, segmented rings. Now, what I do is before I cut, do any cutting, I take that board and onto my table saw, if this edge is, 90, is uh, 65 degrees, I take 90, 90 minus 65, and that's 25, I tilt my table at 25 degrees, and then I rip this edge off, and then I turn it around and rip this edge off. That lets you set this on your, your miter saw. This is flat against the table. This is flat against the wedge. And when you cut those pieces and glue them together, you don't have to flatten them because they are already going to be flat on the top or the bottom. So, so this is the way to do stave or a stave construction, use the compound and then pick an angle that is one that you want to use more often. Does that make sense? I'm, I, I do plan to make a uh, tutorial on, uh, on, on, on doing this because it, it just is, it just, it revolutionized. By the way, it, it, one one thing about that is I like to make bowls. If I'm going to make a gift, I like to do stave bowls with this kind of thing, make it taller, and then have a segmented top on it or a burl or something like that. Uh, I can probably show you if, if I go to um, stave. 
vase, things things like these or these. There's uh, in, there's probably examples of you know solid tops, but to make something like this, if you have the ability, now it's one thing if you make a sled to make that stave. And if this is, so anytime you make this vase, it, it might be taller or shorter, but it, it's going to have that many segments and they're going to fit together great because you've made a sled. But I like to do, uh, do this you know, or like this because they go together so fast, especially if you can use that compound uh, process that flattens the top and the bottom. Um, you, you, so to, to make something like this, which I think is very attractive, and then all you do is you put spacers of a single piece of wood or three pieces of wood or whatever, and then put a segmented top or bottom on it, then it's something you can do in, in no time at all. So any questions there? So can I assume, Brad, we're running out of time? So. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I'll leave it up to everybody as to how long they want to stay. I think um, for those that we've lost a couple that have had to leave, but uh, uh, I think it's up to you, Lloyd, as to how much time you want to give us of, of well, your I, day. I think. Oh, I'm I'm fine. It's it's early out here. I'm I'm in Oregon. I, I'm going to show you one more thing, just because we we've only scratched the surface on the power of this, but I'm going to show you something that is is gives us even a lot more power. I'm going to file new. Um, and I'm going to go back 3D Design Pro. I'm going to go File Open. And now I'm going to go into. Um, Lloyd, can yes. you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, it's Wayne. Um, oh, hi, Wayne. On that thing you just, how are you? Good. Um, just curious. I would never ever think about making something uh, with. Uh, basically horizontal and vertical grain meeting like that together. Uh, apparently you do that all the time. Well, for example, in, in doing staves like that, it's all side grain to side grain for that ring. But then what I will do if I'm going to go to, I will use a mortise and tenon joint between that and whatever, if it's going to go to segments, uh, I would absolutely just put a mortise and tenon joint that's going to let me switch directions of the grain. Uh, so for example, if uh, I would make this and but the, the way you know, this is going to be the grain is going to go there. So you're gluing side grain to side grain. But then I will before I put this on, I will and let's say that this is an inch wide, I will make a, a ten a mortise I will turn a tenon on to it, and then I will make a, a mortise, and then this piece will have a tenon that fits into it. So now you're gluing side grain of this to side grain of this. And, and so nothing, it, that's gonna hold it together. I'm, gu I'm guessing that every one of these was done that exact same way. Mm. Okay, it's, I will have a, to play with that. <laughs> yeah, it's a big deal, because, but you know, this is, that, that is something that's done all the time. Now, however, I live in Oregon. We had we have no humidity out here, uh, so that could make a difference in some parts of the country. And I don't, I can't, I can't talk to that. It's just not something I've ever had. I've never had one come apart. Okay, so yeah, humidity is definitely an issue here. But uh, yeah, so okay, so if I wanted to make here's a seven o two. I'm going to go into three D Design Pro. I'm going to go to my samples, paper mills. OK, so this is what I want to make. And I want to do it in, I want to make this into a lighthouse. So I'm going to use Segment Pro for that. So I'm going to transfer this to Woodturner Pro. And then I'm going to make it 10 inches tall. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to take a maple bat that is um, four inches in diameter, 
a, a maple bat blank. And I'm going to, to cut off, the bottom's gonna be this tall. Then I'm gonna add a new row and it's gonna be flat. And I'm gonna make this out of eight segments. No, I'm gonna do it out of six segments. And then, and that is going to be this tall. And then I'm going to add an, one more row and it's going to be a disc again. Oh, shoot. I think I, this caused a problem. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to open one that I already have done on this way. So so uh, so as you can see, this this is what I did in 3D Design Pro. This is solid wood. This is solid wood made from a baseball blank. This is staves, but instead of them, they're going to be cut as staves. But I'm going to do it in Lamination Pro. So I'm going to go Lamination Pro. I'm going to file new. Um, I'm going to have um, seven strips. It's not going to be symmetric, but each of these is going to be three quarters of an inch. So I'm not going to, I'm actually not going to go through the, all of the steps on this, but I'm just going to show you, I would do three quarters of an inch, seven, all, all of these are going to be three quarters of an inch. It's going to be maple, walnut, maple, walnut, maple, walnut, maple, walnut. And if that was true, then I would go to continue and then I would do them um, at 30 degrees and about five eighths. And so go to a first generation. And so this is what I glue together and it's got maple, walnut and so on. And so that is then what I clicked on export to Woodturner Pro. And so if, if we are in Woodturner Pro, if you double click this row, that is the target. So if I were was back in um, Lamination Pro and clicked on export to Woodturner Pro, I, I'm just gonna show you what that would be, what would happen. I need, it needs to be five inches taller and I'm gonna go back to the Laminate Wizard and I'm just gonna make the top one inch and the bottom one inch. So let's just say that this was my, and I'm still gonna have a blank space. I'm gonna say export to Woodturner Pro. I'm gonna go back to Woodturner Pro, give it a species name of pepper mill. Do we just call it pepper? I'm gonna click on okay. You wanna add the instruction? I'm gonna say yes. And it, as you can see, it transferred that to it. So that's what you would do in order to, um, to, to make that that design that I had, I'm just going to bring it back in. So, and then when you turn it, you just turn it to an angle like this. Now, you can, now that you've done that, um, in over here, you have an outline plan. This is one where I've, you can say, the plan that we're looking at here is called my plan. And that you see that right here. I can click, right click on this and say plans. And I can say add plan. And I want it to be a, um, um, we're just gonna call it Chevron. Okay, and then the template, we can either start with a blank plan or we can say, start with my plan. So now I've got two plans my plan and Chevron. So now I can change this however I want. I can change these however I want. Uh, just for example, if I make this one um, bigger. Now, if I go back to, if I switch plans to my plan and to Chevron, whatever I do in this one, I will. So now I've stored two fat files in this one plan. So like when I, I I have to, I've had to make a lot of cremation urns. So I'll come up with one shape of a cremation urn, and then I will have different plans in it. One of them that's maybe gonna have a Southwest design, one that's gonna have more segments, 
And then on each of them, I put in notes that tells notes that tells it the cost of this design. So if I sit down with someone, they, I say this is this is a shape that you might want to consider. And here are some different capabilities and what they're going to cost. So they pick one that they like, and um, then I, I build that one. So anyway, that's something also that that um, Wood Turner Pro lets you do, and it's a great way to instead of having 25 different files, you have one file with 25 different plans in it. You also then can tell it you can add to it. This is what it's going to look like when it's done, or you know, like this, and um, so, and then you, in your supporting files, I would put the Lamination Pro files that I created in Lamination Pro. I would also put the 3D Design Pro in here. So now when you save this one file, it's saved everything that you know about this, this, uh, this plan. So it's, it's a good deal. Uh, so anyway, there's just a lot of power in WoodTurner Pro. The more you use it, the more you want to use it. Okay, so, so anyway, with that, I, I hope I wasn't too long winded. There's just so much here to cover, but um, I appreciate the opportunity of talking with you. And like you say, on every page of my website, it's got my phone number and I am not hard to reach. I have my cell phone with me all the time. You can call nights, weekends, or whenever. So, Brad, thank Good. you very much for inviting me. Yeah, Lloyd, we appreciate your Thank time. You. We appreciate you spending this time with us and walk us through it. I thought, uh, you know, when I found it, uh, it certainly changed how much time I spent calculating things and allowed me to be a little more flexible. And I've been new to turning, so it was certainly a helpful tool for me to, to get into the wood shop quicker than trying to spend a bunch of time figuring it out. So I thought it would be worth sharing. I know that Beth and Reed have used it and some others have, so I thought it'd be nice to, to share it with everybody. So appreciate your time. You bet. Well, I enjoyed that. So, well, thank you thank very much. You. If you ever get to uh, Oregon, I'm, I'm just south of Portland. Look me up. And by the thank way, you. by the way, all the segmented wood turners we have, we try, we we have always had a symposium every other year, and now we're on to a three year. We took this year off, but we are going to have one next year. Oh boy. So. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thank again. you. Thank you very Thanks, much, Lloyd. Lloyd. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Lloyd. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Brad, for putting this together. Yeah, happy to. Uh... Oh, it was great. Yeah, thanks as always, Brad. Yeah, great. it was. It was after a while. It was like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, I got brain blown. <laughs> my brain was getting full. Yeah, me yeah, well, too. Yeah, well, I recorded it, um, so I can post this um, on that uh, nice site that Phil's got prepped for us. So as soon as Zoom, once I'm done, is I'll kind of put a header and a footer on it, and once Zoom is done with the recording, I'll post it up there, and then everybody can at least run through it. Uh, there were some good tips and tricks in there that I didn't know. So even after yeah. using it, there's a couple of pointers. But um, he's been a pleasure to work with, too. I've sent him a note saying, hey, how do I do this? And he's like, well, let's get on a Zoom and I'll show you. And he literally walked me through stuff. So That's it was awesome. really good. That's right. Awesome. He's been useful for some of my problems. And the forum has also been useful because I don't know whether it's because I bought such a cheap PC, but there are a few <laughs> bugs that I've learned how to get around. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. Well, and now you know how to update it too. Years at least. Yeah. So, Beth, have you used any of the video tutorials? I have, and I've also seen them talk like three times before. Sure. And so, to some extent, my problems were more deeper than covered in right. tutorials. Right. Mean, stupid little things, and again, it may be because. I just update now and I hadn't updated before. Sure. But for example, if I open Segmented Pro, the default is 24 segments. And if I then open one of my saved pro my saved things, it opens at 24 segments rather than the 48 I made it at. Uh -huh. I want to work around is always at the blank, bring it up to 48 
then open my pro my safe plan. Got it. Great. But we we bought segmented pro when it first came out, so and I, sure what we, need, we need to update. And Wood Turner Pro, it was probably five or more years before that. Wow. So, so you've been long time users and you like it? it all the time. You like it though? Yeah, well, I like it a lot. I mean, I started on Wood Turner Pro, so, you know, the sort of, you know, segment in his heat, what he made for sort of more beginners. So it frustrates me a little more because, you know, why can't I change the size of each row? Right. But right. It has good points. We tried a competing software, which I don't even remember. Years and years ago. At one point, it, it was just really difficult to use. This is easy. I mean, our biggest problem is we're Mac users. And again, when I started, I started using Parallels and then Parallels had to update and you had to pay them another hundred bucks for the update. Yeah. And so I tried Bootstrap, but I couldn't get a cheap version of Windows that I could load on the Mac. And so I bought the cheap PC because it was just easier. Yeah, trip right. to Best Buy would be the best solution. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I run it in VMware Fusion. I run it on the Mac. Um, and I run it in Fusion. I have other stuff that I run in Fusion, and it hasn't skipped a beat. It's been fine. What but is it's something I keep up to date. It probably is, you know, a hundred bucks every couple of years to keep Fusion up to date. So, but so what is Fusion, Brad? Fusion is a is a virtual PC emulator. So it allows you on any operating system to run any other operating system. But okay. VMware Fusion is for the Mac to run uh, either PC or a Unix operating system. Does it set up separate partitions and run separately, or is it an emulator? Uh, it will do either one. You can run it in either mode. Whoa, sounds pretty pretty powerful. Yeah. It is very powerful. It, it was designed for true virtualization. So take and virtualize a whole bunch of hardware onto one powerful server, and it'll spin up spindles and different, different virtual machines on demand. So it, it was very complicated, and they've kind of slimmed it down for a more consumer-based version. Yeah, again, this is the only program I have that I need a PC, so. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, happy to hey, everybody. Take care. Good night. Good night. All right, Thank thanks you. for being Good night. Good night.